This is your pastor and I am, as always, excited to be able to share with you today what God has put on my heart for you. And um, I'd love for you to just take this time to share this, invite some people to come in to this discussion today. Um, I believe it's going to be powerful and I believe it's going to be enlightening. Um, there's something that has really been on my heart for a while. And I, I started to say, you know, relative to my to my young people, but the reality is this message applies to young people and even older people like myself and people that are even older than than me. Maximizing access. Maximizing access and let me let me just take a prophetic uh, shift to share with you why I'm sharing this particular message with you today. The Spirit of God is getting ready to give you and you are those who can hear this in the spirit and receive this by faith. The Spirit of God is getting ready to give you access into arena, ar arenas and opportunities um, that are going to really blow your mind. You're getting ready to stand in the midst of companies of people that you never thought you would be associated with. You're getting ready to um, be called into settings that you, you only dreamed of ever even being able to uh, witness others stand in and you're going to be the focal point. This is getting ready to be an amazing season of opportunity for you. God's getting ready to give you access to promotion, access to greatness. But it's, it's going to be imperative that you really get you know, the message of what I'm going to share with you today. And I share this message with you, not just academically, but I share this message with you uh, experientially. I've been here and I've done this. I've tried, I've, I've gone through the trial and the error. Maximizing the access. When you get in the room, it's not enough and I'm getting ahead of myself, but just getting in the room and just having access is not enough. I see so many, especially young preachers that um, get in positions where they have access and then they fall apart. And I'm going to share with you to today what causes them to squander the opportunity of access, because that's all access is. It's an opportunity. Most people view access as uh, an, an accomplishment or an end in itself. And the reality is that access is just simply, clearly, merely an opportunity. It's what you do with it. Now, if you go to Proverbs uh, chapter 18 and verse 16, it says, a man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. Now, in the actual context, context etymologically, you know, the, 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 the text is actually talking about a, a person's financial gift or a material gift makes room for him and brings him before great men, which I mean, that's that's common sense. But then there's a, a larger principle that can always be applied because not only do you have monetary gifts, but you have uh, personal giftings that God has put within you, you know, assets that you can bring to the table that serve the same purpose as a monetary gift, whatever you have that is of value that becomes an asset to 
uh, a particular setting will always make room for you. So he says, a man's gift maketh room for him. And then it says, and bringeth him before great men. Your gift will always make room for you. And it will always present you to people that can change your life. That's what your gift will do. Your gift gives you access. But access, you know, having room made for you, is just a step in a certain direction. In fact, it's just one step. It's just step one. Once you acquire access, you will then have to maximize the moment. Once you're in the room, once you're connected and once, you, once you've made the acquaintance, you now have to maximize that moment. And so many that gain access squander the moment. They're unprepared. You know, um, most people are satisfied with access alone. I got in the room. I got in the room. You hear people many times talk about, um, you know, how, what they did. Uh, you know, I, I did this 10 years ago. I did this 20 years ago. I did this 15 years ago. And they have absolutely nothing to say relative to what they're doing now. Well, what does that tell you? If a person is always talking about what they did and they're relatively young, you know, and, and 60 and 70, to be quite honest with you, today is relatively young. You have people that are starting businesses at 70 and succeeding. And if you, if you always hear a person talking about what they did 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and they never have anything to say about what's going on now, what does that tell you? That tells you that they had access but somewhere along the line, they didn't maximize because the reason God makes room for you and brings you before great men is that you might be empowered to create a lifelong legacy. Access is only watch this. Listen to this very carefully. It's only an opportunity to be proven. You know, God will take a young preacher and he'll give him or her favor with certain senior man or woman of God. And that young preacher can take that access and they can do right with it and it can catapult them into their future. They can take that access and they can squander it and God will simply fire them and move someone else in. You know, my father had to teach me this that you're going to have to have more than giftedness. Your gift is only an opportunity. It, it only provides an opportunity for you to be proven. See, nobody's really scrutinizing you. You don't really have uh, a sharp eye of scrutiny on you until Room has been made and your gift is standing before great men who know the difference between uh, your A game versus your failing game. See, all, all the while you've been coming along, along, you've been judged by people who don't know the difference. But when you get in the room, God has made room for you and you're brought before great men. They're scrutinizing you with a different kind of eye. And so your gift makes room for you, but it's only room for you to be proven. Just because you got in the room, that's nothing to brag about. Well, you know, my gift made room for me. What did you do with it? Your gift makes room for you and brings you before great men. What did you do with that? Were you approved? There are a lot of people who whose gift brings them in the room and the great men that they're brought before kicks them out or will kick them out because they don't have, watch this, many times they don't have the character to sustain the gift. Many people are more gifted than they are mature. 
Big mistake, big mistake, big mistake, big mistake. Young preachers make, well, old preachers, in fact, make this same mistake. Is the thing that just because you're a gifted preacher or you can prophesy or you can sing or you can write songs, that that's enough. If you don't have a, if you don't have a corresponding character, your lack of character will always sabotage your gift. Your gift to get you in the room, your character will always get you kicked out. There's some preachers watching me right now who are some of the most gifted, young and older preachers. But you can't keep your pants up. You can't stay out the bed. You know, you, you just your sex, your sexual life is all out of control. You know, you, you can't go in and preach and have have the Lord use you in a mighty way without flirting with the women after service and all of this kind of thing. You know, you, 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 you're not mature enough. You don't have enough character to keep your sex life under control. So you allow you're you're going to allow your sex life to dismantle piece by piece your entire future. And then you run from people that will challenge you to get yourself together. And you run to people who have the same problems as you. All of you all are a bunch of little bums running together. Because, what is a bum? A bum is a person that has a level of greatness within them, but chooses a life that does not maximize it. You're a bum. If God put this in you and you have not maximized it because of, you know, failing character, you're like that, that tree that Jesus walked upon that did not bear fruit and he cursed it. God put it in you. But there are some things that are relative to you that are squandering the fruit that God intends for your life to produce. Your gift makes room for you, but your character makes a place for you. That's good right now. Your gift makes room, but your character makes a place. Everybody that has room doesn't have a place. Now, let's see something. If, if you go to, I said access is only an opportunity to be proven. Now, here's an interesting text that I, that I want us to look at. In Matthew 25, 15 through 19, we're dealing here with um, the master and the servants with the talents. And I want us to look at that from the perspective of the talents allotted them being um, symbolic of access. The, the, the master gave them access to his resources. Now, if you look in Matthew 25, again, 15 through 19, it says, and unto one, he gave five talents to another two and to another one to every man, according to his several ability. And he gave every man according to his what? Several ability, his giftedness. He received access based on his gift, giftedness and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. The one that received one took and hid what the master had given him. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. So now in, in, when he reckons with them, he uh, rewards those that increased it, took the access that they were given and increased upon it. And the one that did nothing with the access, he took from him what he had originally given him and he called him wicked. The master gave each man an allotment based on his ability, which is symbolic again of the man's giftedness. Your giftedness will make room or produce a certain level of opportunity for you. But then after a while, the master came back to judge the worthiness of each, to see what they had done with the access given. He promoted or demoted them based on their performance. See, your gifts will make room for you. But once that room is made, now you have to do what? Perform. If they didn't maximize the access, they were rejected. So now how many of you are gifted, 
but you're not maximizing your giftedness. You're, you're squandering. See, giftedness produces opportunity, but character equals approval. Giftedness will always, always produce opportunity, but character equals approval. Many gifted people will be rejected. Many gifted people will be rejected. I was reading um, um, an email today of a certain person who's married to a certain person who's gifted, but they can't, they're extremely gifted in fact, but they can't seem to get anything to really pop off for them. It's because many gifted people will be rejected. Giftedness is only an opportunity for you to be proven. Character is the, is the ability. It's, it's, it's having the corresponding internals to, to match your giftedness that you may etch out a, a place in the space. Now, uh, let's see. If you look in Matthew 22, verses 9 through 14, it says, Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many, this is a parable, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw, now, so, now watch this, room has been made for them, they're before great man, but now they're being proven. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, friend, how comes, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? How you come to this, you know, this auspicious occasion of mine without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away, cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Watch verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Just because you're called does not mean you're going to be chosen. Everybody that's called to ministry is not going to be chosen. Your gift will make room for you but you have to have a corresponding character to maintain a, a space or place in that space. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many gifted people will be rejected. I know you sing very well. I know you, you, you teach very well. I know that, you know, you, you preach very well. I know that you're very charismatic. You know how to move the crowd, but let me tell you something. When the King steps into the space, to actually analyze you if you do not have a corresponding character to match the gift, you will be rejected. Now, there are three things that I want to share with you before I let you go today. Relative to three things that I see that consistently causes people to forfeit um, opportunities. Their giftedness makes room for them, presents them before the, the right people that can, you know, open the right doors. But these three things consistently will cause a person to be rejected. You get in the room and be thrown out as fast as you came in. See, number one, moral failure causes rejection. It's better for you to, to stay off the scene. It's better for you not to get on social media. It's better for you not to take engagements, preaching and singing when you know you don't have your, 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 your morality in place because morality, just being a moral person is fundamental. You know, if I'm sitting here and they calling me the bishop and I'm the pastor and I'm the empowerment speaker and I'm writing books and I'm doing conferences and, and I can't, I can't, you know, stay out of the bed with women I'm not married to. That's a bad combination. It would be better for me 
to, to not even accept certain opportunities until I would get myself together because your moral failures, your moral failures, you have to understand while you're looking at the people who can only see so much and you can fool them, God is looking down on you who is never fooled and sees everything. Your moral failures. I don't care what this modern church teaches you. God is still concerned about holiness and holiness is not perfection. In fact, we are imperfectly holy, but even though we're imperfect, we should be striving. And there are some things that just should not be mentioned among among the saints. And there are too many of you who are gifted, who allow your moral failures to undo everything your gifting accomplishes. If you go to 1 Samuel 15, uh, verses 23 through 26, it says, speaking of Saul, says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. I believe the reason that God has me sharing this message today, I've been teaching on the Holy Spirit, but the Lord told me to teach this today is because I believe that some of you, I believe this is a prophetic warning and because some of you are on the verge of being rejected by God. He says, um, God has also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. So he didn't listen to God and he didn't listen to his prophet. And God has rejected him because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. Now, what do we learn here? You and I are always uh, on an audition. So watch this. Your gift makes room for you and say you do the right thing and you're accepted. And you begin to, you know, expand and increase. And then you choose to go south. God will fire you. God will fire you. There's no such thing as, well, I'm this. Saul was king. God said, I'm done with him. Samuel was begging God, please forgive him. God said, don't come tell me nothing else about Saul. I've rejected him. And it's almost like God was saying to Samuel, if you keep on bothering me about this man, I'm going to reject you. And then Samuel says to Saul, I can't go with you, bro. God has rejected you. That's what, that's what unnecessary moral failure will get you. It will get you rejected by God. You just keep on going through the same thing over and over again, always crying about you sorry. Man, go sit down with that. Go sit down with that. You're not, you're not, you're not repentant. Because when you repent, it means that your heart has been broken. So much so that you turn your life around. Doesn't mean that you don't fall again, but you're not every weekend you in the same in the same hotel with a different woman, with a different man doing all kinds of stuff. And moral failure causes rejection. Your gift makes room for you, but your moral failure will get you kicked out. You got to get yourself together. It's better not to go. And to become public and all this stuff until you get get certain primary matters under control. Number two, ego tripping. Get in the room and then your head get all swole up. It's hard for me to find a son or daughter that uh, can have any measure of success without their head getting swollen. Get arrogant and, you know, important and haven't haven't done anything. You haven't gone anywhere, haven't accomplished nothing. You preach one or two good sermons and now all of a sudden, you know, you high and mighty. You, you, you important now. Who the Hades are you? Don't nobody even know you. Don't nobody know you. 
And you ego tripping, looking down on people. You so important. You know, you got to have four and five uh, armor bearers. Who are you? Who, who, who in the Hades are you? You better stop tripping, man. Ego. Edging God out. When you start ego tripping, you are edging God out. And when you start edging God out, you are Humpty Dumpty on the wall. The question always arises in my mind. Humpty knew he was an egg. Why would he get his behind on that wall? Ego. Ego. Your gift makes room for you. Your ego gets you rejected. Can't stay humble. Can't keep your feet on the ground. Can't maintain the heart of a servant. Become rebellious and become arrogant and important. This is why most people can't go anywhere. They don't know how to stay humble. Daniel 5, 20 and 21. But when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him and he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beast and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen and his and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men. And that he appointeth over it whomsoever he will. This boy got lifted up in pride and start claiming credit for what God had done. God said, okay, we're going to see. When God got through with him, he drove him so much out of his mind, he was running around like a wild animal. Until he recognized that the most high sets one up, pulls down another. And then number three. When you have an unteachable heart. See, when you get into the room, you have to understand your gift brings you in there, but you don't know nothing. You, 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 the room that's been made for you amongst great men is another level. So you don't need to enter in running your mouth. You don't know anything. You have nothing really to add to the conversation. You need to come in, shut up and listen. I heard um, Bob Proctor say when he has a mentor, he does exactly what his mentor tells him to do, exactly what his mentor tells him to do until his mentor proves to either not know what he's talking about or proves to be a quack. But if he, got, if he has somebody that's at the level he desires to go to, he does exactly what they tell him to do. He maintains a teachable spirit. Even if he doesn't understand it, he does what he's told to do until it's proven that he don't know what he's talking about or he's off his rocker. And there are many people who have room made for them and they fail when they get there because they're not teachable. Run in your mouth, talking about what you know and all this kind of thing. You, you know nothing. And the people that know better know you don't know. And the Bible says in Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And we like to stop there, but listen to what it says. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. They were destroyed for lack of knowledge, but he says they rejected knowledge. Because wisdom is crying out in these streets. And so don't be as one whose gift makes room for you, brings you before great men, you squander it, maximize the moment and watch God bring your life into an amazing dimension. That's God's will for you. That's God's will for you. I hope you got something out of this.